All right, so simplifying expressions, the next thing we're going to need to be able to do is evaluate an expression. All right, so we have lots of different ways that these evaluate expression questions come up. One is you'll just see it like this. Evaluate, ah, oh, I can't spell, you can't see it, but there you go. Evaluate uh, x squared plus 3x minus 7 for x is equal to negative 2. This is definitely a problem where students will make mistakes, especially here when they plug in the negative 2. A lot of students will forget to put the negative 2 into parentheses, whether they're doing this in the calculator or by hand. They will forget that negative 2 squared should be a positive 4. So one thing you can do, especially if you're going to evaluate something multiple times, you could type it in exactly like it is, just replacing and making sure to use parentheses. Um, but you can also see above table it says expression eval. And so that's an expression evaluator. If I press second and table, it asks me what the expression is. And I'm going to type this in using the variables that we weren't allowed to use for simplifying. So x squared plus 3x minus 7. And then it's going to say, well, what x do you want to test this for? Now well, I want to evaluate it for negative 2. And it's going to tell me that this is equal to negative 9. If that seems like a little too much, like hocus pocus, you couldn't see what was going on, you can always type it in on your own and verify that it's giving you out, oops, the minus 7, the same thing, and feel good about it. Okay, but that's evaluate. And the nice thing about this expression evaluator is it can even handle more letters than just one. So I'm going to bring up a question that we had on our diagnostic, number 21 here. We had to evaluate this expression that had a, b, and c for those three different values. So I'm going to type this thing in. I need a negative, oops, a negative one third. If you press the variable button more than once, it'll bring up different variables. So x, y, z, t, a, b. So you can see all the letters it has available right here. It goes up to d. Minus, oh, I need another fraction, 1 over 4. Need parentheses. A minus, more variables, b. And I can put a times symbol if I want, but I don't really need to. I can just go ahead. Oops. Need to tell that it was done. B. C. So now my expression looks exactly the same as what's written here, right? You can see it. Go back and forth and say, yep, looks exactly the same. If I press enter, it asks me what is B, because it's the first variable. I can see I want B to be 3. So that's already in there. I've obviously used this calculator for this problem before. I want A to be negative 12. And I want my c to be negative 8. And it's going to tell me that this whole thing is just equal to negative 4. Now again, I can verify this by just typing it in exactly as it appears. b was 3 and using parentheses. Minus 1 fourth. Uh, a was a negative 12. Minus b times a negative 8 and I get negative 4 either way. So there's just two ways that you can evaluate expressions. Uh, one is by using the expression evaluator here. Uh, two is by just typing it in using parentheses. Another way you might have to evaluate is when we see things in function notation, right? So let's just say we had, uh, let's do something fun that we haven't done in class. Absolute value of x plus 7. So absolute value, by the way, uh, just takes whatever's inside of this and makes it into a positive. So if we were to evaluate f of negative 9 by hand, we would just replace the x with a negative 9. Since these are both inside of the symbols, we would uh, simplify them first. So we got absolute value of negative 2. And the negative absolute value just makes anything negative positive. Everything is going to be positive. It's technically how far something is from 0. But to do this in the calculator, I have two options. One, I could use that expression evaluator and use that. If you go into math and over to the number section, there's absolute. And you could just type it in, x plus 7, and tell it we want to evaluate it negative 9. You could also, especially if we're going to do more than one, you could use the table function and edit it, especially because we have function notation. So again, you can make this look exactly like the function that we have, x plus 7. 
and then you can have it set for x equals question mark which means that it will go ahead and whatever you tell it to plug in it'll tell you what the output is so negative 9 is 0 oops I didn't mean to press clear I meant to delete some of these because it only has three at once so I can plug in negative 9 if there was another problem that asked well what happens if you plug in positive 9 I could keep plugging in different numbers so um, I would use the table if you're going to do more than one and if you're only going to do one you can always use the expression evaluator or just plug in uh, with using parentheses to make sure you don't have any problems.